Now we'll go back down the hill to go through Sankari Kor. The name means narrow gully, and behind it is Chiksoli Gram, the village of Chitra Devi. Here we meet up with some of our ISKCON devotees, and we enjoy hearing the pastimes that occurred here with them. As dutiful village girls, Srimati Radharani and her girlfriends would take their parents' dairy products from town to town in the area to distribute them. But Krishna and his boisterous cowherd boyfriends would regularly try to stop them and transcendentally interfere with them by trying to charge them taxes or steal their products or just break the clay pots they were carrying them in on their heads. Raghava Goswami, who himself is Champak Lata, another of Srimati Radharani's Astasaki girlfriends, says the enjoyment the divine couple had on this narrow path between the two mountains is indescribable. One time, Srimati Radharani and her girlfriends were coming up through the gully with yoga pots on their heads, and Krishna and the cowherd boys tried to stop them from passing towards Varshana. The gopis told them that they were innocent cowherd girls engaged in the service of their parents, taking their dairy products to the market for them. But Krishna boldly declared, I've heard about you girls sneaking around the forest on the back paths, trying to sell your yogurt on the black market. The gopis protested that this was not at all true. But then Krishna pushed Srimati Radharani back towards the gully. Radharani pushed Krishna back, and then all the boys grouped together, and all the girls grouped together, and they started pushing each other back and forward. Sometimes the gopis would push the boys back down the path towards Varshana, and sometimes the cowherd boys would push them back down the gully. As this was going on, Krishna's funny Brahmin friend, Madhu Mangal, was laughing at the gopis and making remarks about how weak they were. What could they do against these powerful cowherd boys, he said. Finally, after much pushing and shoving and shouting, Krishna knocked Srimati Radharani's yogurt pot off her head, and it smashed here on the rocks at the side of the gully, making Madhu Mangal roar with laughter. Even today, we can still see the stain left on the rocks from Srimati Radharani's yogurt. Here we see Lalita Devi in her peacock-colored clothes, chastising Krishna for doing this mischief. She's famous for her fiery nature and sharp transcendental tongue, and later we'll go to her village named Unchigal. Then the gopis decided to take revenge. They retreated back to Chitra Devi's village and gathered reinforcements, and then in a group of 200, carrying many pots of yogurt, they returned up through the gully. One by one the gopis came through to the top, and initially Krishna and the cowherd boys laughed, thinking they were going to have more fun at their expense. However, to the cowherd boy's surprise, more and more gopis kept coming through Sankari Kaur until the boys were completely surrounded. Then the gopis began pouring their yogurt over the heads of Krishna and his cowherd boyfriends. A number of gopis gathered around Madhu Mangal 
and together they poured many pots of yogurt over him. Madhu Mangal cried and told them, You're going to become guilty of the sin of drowning a Brahmin if you don't stop. However, the gopis just laughed and poured more yogurt on him. After this victory, the gopis went back to Chitradevi's village and celebrated. They say that during the fighting, Krishna's turban unraveled and fell on this rock, leaving a white streak running across. They also say that this is the impression of Krishna's stick. Pilgrims put yogurt on the rock where Srimati Radharani's pot broke, and the monkeys get to have a yogurt feast. 